Hi everyone and welcome to the channel. Today is going to be a little bit of a different video than what you're used to me bringing to you. This is more of a PSA and a PSA is public service announcement. I am participating in a collaboration called Every Child Matters. This is a collaboration that is brought on by a group of us ladies called the Community Tribe. And the ladies are Design and Style with Stacy, Shawnee on the Spot, Debbie Bubbles, Glam Queen of DIY, Levels of Style with Sandra, DIY Design by CCW at Penny's Place and Jazzy Green Decor Style. April is considered the month of uh, child abuse awareness, but since our April is gone, we're going to be doing this in May, which is... Before I get into it, I will have a playlist down in my description box, along with all the ladies of the Community Tribe, their ch channels. So please watch all of our videos. We would really appreciate it and share the video because it's very, very serious and it's very, very uh, important that we spread the word. So here we go. Number one. We want to think of ways um, to inform you guys of statistics regarding the rise of this grievous issue affecting our community. For one, child abuse is continuous. It's happening every single day, growing at an even rate, fast rate. That's very, very alarming. For most part, it goes on without being heard of. Other times it's heard of and not much is being done about it. Then unfortunately, when the abuse happens, it ends in tragedy. That's not good. That's got to stop. What are ways that we can put an end to child abuse? I did some research on this and the 2021-2022 Children's Bureau's uh, Publications Guide recognizes actions to be taken. For one, as a society, within community systems and in our organizations, as well as with individual families, to address the root causes What's the root causes of mal maltreatment and provide meaningful support? What's the root cause of why children are being abused? Many, many types of abuse. Physical abuse, verbal abuse, sexual abuse, mental abuse, just abuse. Another point. To make child abuse less likely to occur, we need to invest in communities and invest in our families. Now, one way this can be done is by addressing the societal attitudes and values around parenting, making it clear that all parents and families need support. They need support in overcoming life's challenges at times because parents have a lot of pressure on them and so do the people in their families and in their homes. If we truly come together with a unified voice to address the root causes of family vulnerability and commit to taking collective action toward this common goal, we can move beyond drawing awareness to the problem of child abuse and supporting strong, healthy, resilient families. It's hard to say that word. Families, service providers, and communities work tirelessly year round to protect and nurture children and promote their well being. For nearly 40 years, National Child Abuse Prevention Month has played an important supporting role by increasing awareness and educating the public about child maltreatment prevention. 
Today, we know much more than we did 40 years ago about the neighborhood, community, and societal factors that can either promote family well-being or make parenting more challenging. We have an abundance of evidence about what leaves families vulnerable to maltreatment and how to support them effectively. If we are serious about preventing child maltreatment, we know it is most effective to reduce those vulnerabilities before child before a child is harmed. The single most important thing that we can do is support families all year round in ways that promote and build up their strengths and enable them to care for their children safely. When we commit to partnering with families to help them access resources that focus on child and family well-being, they are better able to cope with stress, mitigate risk, risks before uh, forming before formal child welfare intervention is needed and realize their full potential. We can be open to new approaches to service delivery that help the whole family, not just a single member, and that recognize and actively mitigate the effects of trauma. We can also recognize the importance of a workforce that has access to quality training and is supported in building effective partnership with families. We can do all these things with a steadfast commitment to addressing inequality and listening to the voices of parents, caregivers, youth, and communities most directly impacted by child welfare intervention. The Federal Focus, CDC Essentials for Childhood. There are four goals that are implemented. Goal number one, raise awareness, like I'm trying to do here, and commitment to promote safe, stable, and nurturing relationships and environments for all children. Number two, use data to inform actions. Number three, create the context for healthy children and families through norms, change, and programs. Number four, create the context for healthy children and families through policies. Now, for example, the North Carolina Task Force on Essentials for Childhood is working together toward four, toward goal four, which is to create the context for healthy children and families through policies. They are partnering and encouraging family-friendly workplaces uh, to get together on this as well. In my area where I live, I live in California, and our assemblyman, Tom Blackie, he has come up with something good that I think is good. It's a bill called the AB, AB 31 Gabriel's Law. This bill would create a centralized statewide office that will investigate and attempt to resolve complaints made by or on behalf of children related to their care. Additionally, AB 31 will gather data and present findings to the state legislature to suggest systemic changes to improve child's uh, California child's welfare system. Our communities will not stand idling by and allow any more children to lose their lives in this way. It's time to make a systematic change to our child welfare system to prevent the abuse and death of innocent children in our state and all over the world. Now I'm going to share with you guys um, something personal. Um, there was a child that 
had been abused by his mother and you guys have, might have heard it on TV, on the news. His name was Gabriel Fernandez, eight year old boy who was born on February the 21st, 2005. He was in my son's elementary school. They both went to the same school. And um, this was all on the news. And if you were to Google his name, Gabriel Fernandez, the whole trial would come up and you could read more details, but I'm just gonna give you some things um, that I feel that might help um, I just want you to be aware, and I know some of you are, but abuse is not good. This is terrible, and this is very dear to my heart. This little boy, Gabriel, was terribly tortured by his mother and his uh, stepdad. He was burned. He had lots and lots of burns all over his body. Cuts, bruises. He had skull fractures. This little boy was tortured from head to toe. He had a brain contusion. His skull was cracked beat with a bat, his teeth knocked out. He was forced to eat spoiled food. And if he got sick, he was forced to eat his throw up. He was bound and gagged and locked in a box for hours. And I, at the end of this uh, video, I will share some pictures with you guys so that you can see how real this is his ribs was struck by excessive force multiple times from multiple different directions oh my gosh he was bleeding from the brain his hair literally was pulled out of his skull gabriel was abused beaten, tortured for months before he died. This little boy did not deserve to be tortured, abused, killed. No child deserves to be tortured, beaten, killed, hurt, harm in any kind of way. Now I'm focusing on Gabriel, but I include every child. That's why the title of this collaboration is Every Child Matters, and that is true. Every child matters. I just wanted to share um, something personal in my community that happened. And um, this little boy was such a cute little boy, he did not deserve to die. The school where he attended, we all had a, I think it was a candlelight vigil outside. Myself, my son, and my husband, we all attended among a lot of other parents and students. And, uh, and today, he would have been 16 years old if he had lived. But he didn't. He was tortured and beaten. And his mother is in prison for the rest of her life. I'm not going to say any more on that. But that's the end of the video guys i um because this is hard talking about this and i just wanted to participate in this because this is very dear to my heart and um no child deserves this type of treatment if you see a child being stricken beaten if you hear of it Please don't be afraid to call the authorities. Don't think to yourself, oh, I don't want to get involved. Yes, get involved. This is a child. We need to protect our children. One more thing relating to Gabriel. The system failed him. Child Protective Services did not do what they were supposed to do. And now the boy is not living anymore 
He's not suffering anymore, but he should be here alive and well and say something about it. We have got to stop being afraid to speak up. Think of the child. That child is relying on the adult to protect them. If someone, if a child tells you, you must act. Do the godly thing. Say something. Do something. Try to protect that child in every way you can. I want to thank all of you guys so much for watching. Please thumbs up this video. Comment. Please share your thoughts. Please share this video with everybody. And let's bring awareness to child abuse. Let's stop this demonic activity. Bring awareness to your communities. Thank you so much. Thank you, Community Tribe. Thank you, Stacy, for thinking of this and inviting me to participate. I really appreciate it, and it was an honor to participate in this. You guys have a blessed day, and I will talk to you soon.